Hello, my friends. This is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts. In this week's video, I'm very excited to cover a topic which has been a long time coming. Uh, we are going to talk about how can you create date range filters in Tableau, which allow you to uh, completely customizably uh, select a current period, which filters some values, and then it also filters a comparison period so that you could, you know, pick a three month span this year and it would be able to automatically compared to that same three month span last year, or it's totally dynamic. So one week, one day, six months, two years, it can always do those adjustments. Um, so, so let's kind of dive into this, all right? Uh, so I've actually got a pre-made dashboard because this took a while in and of itself, so I didn't wanna eat up the whole video doing this. Um, so what I've got are some different types of calculations, which do things like tell us, hey, what are our current period sales? How much is that up or down compared to the prior year period, uh, or the prior period, right? So if you're looking at that and thinking, how do I do that? How do I, you know, put those values in there and get these arrows and do these percentages? We're not going to cover that in this video. Although, um, two things. First of all, I will link uh, a video where we talk about how to do that. And then secondly, I'm going to put a link to this workbook that I'm working in in the description. So if you want to download this and reverse engineer what we've done, then you can. All right, so we've got a, a few different worksheets going already where we're looking at our current day sales or current day profit, comparisons, all this good stuff. So I have hard coded a couple of periods into some calculations. So I've got something called current period, true, false, where I'm just saying is the year of the order date 2023, because I'm shooting this in October, 2023. And then I've got a prior period, true, false, where I say is the year 2022 and is the day of year less than or equal to the day of year of today. So this is what we're going to be updating, okay? So where I want to start with this is I want to create some parameters, okay? So the way that would work is I'm going to hit the drop down here in the data pane, create a parameter, all right? So this will be our uh, period start date, okay? Our data type will be date, and we need to pick a date. In our case, I wanna pick something slightly different than it is right now, so that our values change. Uh, so let's say we wanna look at, what, 6, 1, 2023. 20, let's we'll say we'll look at a three month span. So we'll look at 6, 1 through, uh, I think 8, 31 would be three month span. So that's our period start. So we'll say, okay, show our parameter here. And then we'll create another parameter, and this will be our period end date. All right, and this will be 8-31-2023, okay, cool. So as of right now, these do nothing, but that's okay. That's what we need to update in this calculation. So now I've got my current period true, false. Let's go ahead and uh, get rid of the logic that's there now, and we'll update it based on our new fields here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, um, okay, is, uh, let's see, my date, my order date is a date and time field right now. Let me actually go address that really quickly. Uh, this probably is not totally necessary, but, uh, but, uh, I want to, I want to deal with that for a moment. So I'd rather not be dealing with dates and date times that sometimes gives Tableau hiccups. So I'm just going to convert that date time field to a date in that calculation. Bingo. All right. Back to what we were doing, current period, true, false. So here I'll say if the order date is greater than uh, or equal to our period start date and the order date is less than or equal to our period end date, then true, else false. Okay, so what I'm basically telling Tableau is, hey, we've got several years worth of order dates in this data set. I only want that date to return true if it's in the period start and end date range. Okay, and that value did change. So it went from 2.2 million down to 261,000. I went from all of 2023 down to about a three month window. So that makes sense, the value would drop. Um, we can also do uh, some kind of quick testing here. It's always a good idea. Let me do a new worksheet. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna right click and drag order date to rows and select the month, day, year option. And then where was that thing? Uh, current period, true, false. Let's throw that on rows after order date. So false, 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 2019, everything is false. It shouldn't be until we hit June 1st, uh, 2023, that we start seeing trues pop up. 
and you do see that now, right? So you see here, May 31st false, June 1st true, and that true, oops, accidentally just filtered on it, that true should run all the way through the end of August. Yay, it's working. All right, so that's our current period true false. Now, how do we do that same thing, but for the prior period? So in my case, I guess I'm gonna make an assumption that typically my user's not looking at more than one year of data at a time. If they are, then I'd probably have to think about this a little bit more creatively, but maybe just for the sake of our argument and keeping it a little simpler here today, we'll say, hey, we're just going to, you know, factor one year into this. So uh, what I'm, well, actually, that actually, maybe I might need to amend that statement. I think what I'm about to do, it doesn't really matter. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to edit uh, our prior period, true, false, and then here's how this is going to work. So I'm going to say, if the order date is greater than or equal to, and now, not the period start date, because that's June 1st, 2023. If we're comparing year over year, we want that to backlog or backtrack all the way to June 1st, 2022. So I would say the date add year minus one of period start date, okay? And our order date is less than or equal to, and we'll do that same thing, date add year minus one of our period end date. Uh, oops, went all caps there. All right, then true, else false. So it's basically the same premise. It's just take one year off of whatever was selected uh, in the start and end date parameters and then run this thing. Okay, so in our test sheet, oh, I pulled everything off. What was I thinking? Let's put this back on here, month, day, year of our order date. So then now let's put our prior period true, false on there on the row shelf and then It'll essentially be the same thing, but the true should start in June 1st, 2022. Yep, there you go, right? So you can see here, it flipped to June 1st, 2022, true, and then that should go all the way down through August 31st, uh, 2022. Sweet, okay? So now back here, I think everything, you know, should have effectively updated, which is cool. Um, so let me show you a little bit about how these fields are updating my other calculations because just creating those the true false calculations in and of themselves, that's great, but that doesn't really show you how I actually reference those. So I actually have a whole bunch of different calculations down here. Let's just use sales as our example. So I have current sales and prior sales. So in current sales, if I right click and edit this, it's a very simple calculation, right? It just says if current period true false, then sales. So if you haven't really referenced a true false like this before, just saying if Boolean is essentially just saying if this equals true. Same thing, just less characters. So I'm just saying if it's true, then give me sales. So that keeps that simple. That's current sales, prior sales, right? Same idea, but just using the prior period true false calculation instead. And then I've got some calculations which find the difference. So I've got sales growth. If I have to drop down and edit this, you'll see it's just give me the sum of current sales minus the sum of prior sales. Put all that in parentheses because order of operations and then divide that by the uh, sum of prior sales. And just to give you a little insight into the trickery here, how do I get these arrows up there? Um, I've actually done a little custom number formatting as well. So if I go to default properties and number format, I've actually told Tableau, hey, you know, put an up arrow if it's a positive number, a down arrow if it's a negative number, or a dash if it's a zero. Um, so shout out to Ray Givler for that one. I think he told me about that on LinkedIn. Hopefully that's I, I'm remembering that correctly. That was a little while ago. Um, so I've essentially just done something like that for profit and order counts as well. And then for the for the line graphs, like current sales by day, if I pop in here, um, I've just I've just got a day of order date on columns. I got current sales on rows, and then I got a current period true false filter on true on the filters card. So as these parameters are updated. So if I flip this to, let's say, July 1st, right, it's going to shrink the range in that case. Or if I pop it back to June 1st, it'll expand it again. Okay. Uh, I've got an info button which tells me what the ranges are. You can kind of, you can see that here. As I hover over, it tells me the current period versus the prior period. Uh, the way that works is uh, I've had a couple of calculations to just give me the min and the max dates. So I just said, if current period true, false, then order date, end. Give me the minimum, right? Same thing for maximum. And I've done that for both the current and prior period 
uh, dates. Okay. So a couple last things we might want to do. I mean, you know, the whole point of this is to give our end user the flexibility to change those periods, right? So what I'm going to do, let me go ahead and do a horizontal container up here. Give us some space. Oh my goodness, what is Tableau doing? It just went absolutely crazy. That's all right. Um, so I'm just going to make this really big and blatant because this is the whole point of this video and I want it to be really obvious what we're doing here. So I'll say, okay, date range. So it doesn't really matter what worksheet I pull it from. Um, if you haven't worked with parameters a lot, a good thing to know about them is that they are uh, you know, global workbook-wide values. You change it in one place, it changes it everywhere, different from a filter in that way. Um, so I can add it from any worksheet because a parameter is in Tableau's mind, it's not strictly tied to a worksheet, okay? So I'll pull my uh, parameter start date. I'll hit the drop down the worksheet, go to parameters, parameter end date. Now let's go ahead and pop these in this layout container along with our little date range title. Okay, so let me right align that because it looks a little silly otherwise. I might need to throw a blank in there. I'm probably spending too long on formatting, but I just suddenly feel very passionate about it. And I want it to look good for you guys, you know? I don't want you to think that my stuff stinks. So let's do a little edit width here. How big is this thing? I wonder if we can get away with 150. Ah, 150. That's a good one. Okay, date range, I guess nothing else really matters after that. Okay, so the cool part is now the uh, the user can just, you know, change these values just like any other day, right? Any other filter. So if I change this, I wanna go back to January 1st, 2023, sweet, I can totally do that. And all my values are gonna adjust accordingly, right? Um, so there you go. That's a, a obviously some of these graphs where it's like daily get a little bit crazy when I'm looking at so much data, so. That is something to consider as well, is how much flexibility do you want to give your user? You know, do you have other things that need to update? If I pick too big of a range, should I get the dates to dynamically change from days to weeks? You could do things like that. It, you know, the world is your oyster. It's just a matter of how, how much you want to dive into that complexity. Um, so I hope that that gives you sort of a good picture about how you can use parameters, tie those to calculations. And not only is it giving you, you know, the ability to filter custom date ranges, which you could do that with a normal filter. Really the, the crux of what we're doing here, the big point is that we've actually made it so that this is impacting a second date range as well with that custom logic that we put together for prior period, true, false. Um, so I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, this is sort of an add-on, I guess, or maybe kind of a, a sequel to our selected versus comparison period video. In that one, we show how you can hard code values. So you could hard code options like year to date, month to date, quarter to date. Um, and you could just let your user pick from a few options and then that can filter both ranges. This is same family, but a little bit different because you're not giving your user preset options. You're giving them the open-ended start and end dates. Um, so thanks for checking this out. If you check out this info button up here in the top corner, Ollie and I run Tableau classes every month. Uh, we teach Tableau desktop, Tableau prep, data preparation, dashboarding, uh, calculations. We would love to have you join for some of these. We love getting to meet you all and dive deeper. We get to only dive into, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes here on YouTube, but um, we get to dive into eight or 16 hours, depending on what class you pick. Um, and we'd love to meet you there. So we drop new videos like this every week. Feel free to follow along. We can't wait to catch you on another one soon. Thanks so much.